I never thought I'd get the chance to come here. <laughs> Takes care of my questions. <laughs> I <laughs> said it was safe to tell you that I'm a little nervous. <laughs> One of the things that I've read that you've said, and I've heard you say it on videotapes, is that um, you tell a few jokes to wake the world up. When did the world go to sleep, and is it waking up? It has been always asleep. Only few individuals in the whole history of man have been awakened. Their names can be counted on the ten fingers, not more than that. And it was natural. Man has evolved out of the animals. Animals are in a deep sleep. They don't know that they are. That is the meaning of sleep. One is but one is not aware that one is. No animal is aware of himself. And I agree with Charles Darwin on different grounds. His grounds are ordinary, mundane can be criticized, has been criticized. In fact, he is no more an accepted scientist about the evolution of humanity. Majority of scientists have deserted him, but I am in his support on a totally different ground. My ground is looking at man's sleep. This is the only possibility that he has grown up from the animals, monkeys, chimpanzees, whatsoever, whosoever was there in the beginning. Man's sleep proves it. And only rarely, once in a while, a Gautam Buddha, a Bodhidharma, a Socrates, Once in a while there has been a man who has guts to come out of his sleep. It needs tremendous courage to come out of his sleep, because in his sleep we have so much invested. It is just like a man who is dreaming that he is living in a golden palace, with a great kingdom, with all the luxuries, and you try to wake him up. He is just a beggar on the street. Only beggars dream of being emperors. Emperors never dream of being emperors. That will be simply illogical. The beggar has so much investment in his sleep and dream, 
that he will resist in every possible way not to be awakened. He will get irritated, he will oppose you, that who are you to interfere in my life? Can't you even tolerate a man who is having a sweet dream? And even if you force him to be awakened, he is going to fall asleep again, because waking he is only a beggar. Asleep he becomes an emperor. The investment in psychological sleep is tremendous. That's why all those people – Gautam Buddha, Bodhidharma, Chuangtazu, Plotinus, Heraclitus, they all failed. They did their best. They struggled again against the sleep of men. But still man is asleep. And whatever he is doing proves that he is asleep. These two world wars prove that he is asleep. The coming third world war can be prevented only if we can awaken enough people so those people become infectious and go on awakening other people in a chain. And it has to be done so fast, because time is not much. Otherwise the sleepy people are going to destroy this earth, this life. Politicians are asleep. No awakened person can become a politician. For the simple reason, because he cannot lie, he cannot give you promises that he knows can never be fulfilled. No awakened people will be a politician because he has no desire for his ego to be fulfilled. There is no ego anymore. Ego exists as a substitute self in sleep. The moment you are awakened, ego has no function. It is useless. You are there, now you don't need it. And the man who knows himself has no inferiority complex. Unless you are suffering from some inferiority complex, you will not be involved into any kind of leadership. Political, religious, social, You don't have the base, the inferiority complex is the cause of everybody becoming ambitious, because if they don't become somebody in the world, in their own eyes they fail. They want to prove themselves that we are here that we have been here. They want 
to be recorded their names in the history, although they know that even the greatest names in history by and by go on slipping from the prominence, become footnotes, move into the appendix and out of the door. Naturally, how many people we can go on carrying, but they want to make their name. That too proves something animal. All the animals of the world have an instinct. Scientists call it the territorial imperative. The dog pissing on the tree is simply making his signature. He is saying that this tree belongs to me. He won't allow another dog to come near, and other dogs will smell his urine and will know that this tree is not free, not available, somebody possesses it. There are animals who will go on particularly, the lion, urinating on a vast territory, just so that everybody is aware Men also works in the same way. All these nations are nothing but people pissing and making <laughs> a boundary that this is America, this is Soviet Union, this is India. You can smell it is a different country. Don't enter without a visa, without a passport. Otherwise there is no need for any nations on the earth. What is the need? Can't we all live as one humanity? <laughs>